Hey folks, welcome back to another Kubernetes video. Today we're going to be talking about pod lifecycle. So let's get into it. First of all, when we talk about the life cycle of a pod, we need to understand pod phase, which is one of the, the key uh, fields in the API that is used to dictate the current point in the life cycle that the pod is in. So it gives us a high level summary of where the pod is in its life cycle. And these are the pod phases. The first one is pending. This is when a pod has been accepted, but it is not uh, ready to run its containers. So for example, we could still be scheduling the pod or the container could be um, downloading or something like that. The second is running. This is when at least one of the containers is in a running state or is restarting. The next is succeeded. This is when a container has completed with a success exit code. So you could think about this um, in terms of maybe a container that we're just running for um, a couple of minutes that we want to do some operations in the cluster with or you could think about a job. A job might run for a couple of minutes and then it will exit. And if, it, if nothing goes wrong, it will end in a succeeded uh, phase. Then there's failed. This is when a pod ends with a error code or non-zero return code when the, the pod ends. So again, any kind of error here could result in a failed pod phase. Then we have unknown. This is when we are unable to determine the particular phase that the pod is currently in. Um, so you can see on the right here, we have the different state transitions as well as the, the phases listed. So we can go from pending to running to terminated success or failure. And then based on our restart policy, we'll possibly go back to pending. Now, um, containers also have their own set of states. Um, with containers, we simply have waiting, running, and terminated. So waiting is when we are waiting for the container to be set up. So there might be certain uh, network resources or we may need to mount some volumes. Um, this is when the container is in the waiting state. Then there's running, which is when the container is executing without any issues. And then there's terminated when the container has finished running, whether it be in uh, success or failure. Pod conditions. So when we look at a container or pod that has that is currently running in the Kubernetes cluster, we'll see this status field within our YAML. If we if we do a kubectl get pods pod, for example, specifying our pod and the status field will contain a number of conditions which are used to determine the state of the pod so the the pod conditions will kind of let us know whether or not um, the pod has passed through these criteria that have been set for it so some examples are pod scheduled so if, if the status of pod scheduled is true, that means that we've successfully scheduled the pod. There is pod has network. So if the pod has been provisioned its network, the status of that condition will be true. And then ready, this is when we are ready to, to run uh, the, the containers within the pod and again, if the status is true, then we'll know that, that it's ready to run. And there are different readiness gates that we can define or um, are default defined by Kubernetes. Um, and these are essentially just the criteria that are used to determine if the ready condition um, will evaluate to true or false. So that is our brief summary of pod lifecycle. But now let's have a look at an example. So let's say we have an end user and he wants to define a new pod. What's gonna happen and how will this uh, 
relate to our pod phase or container state and reason. So the reason is a field that is used to identify with a bit more detail why we're in the current state that we're in. Um, I'll get into that in a moment, but when you do a kubectl get pod or get pods, you will see a status column that comes up. And a lot of the time it doesn't actually reflect the phase or the state, but instead it reflects a reason. So when you see something like um, image pull back off or um, something like that in your status field, that is not a phase or a state for a container. It's actually an event that has occurred. And that event is the reason for the pod being, having that particular status. So we'll, we'll just look at that now in a second. Um, so if we're the end user, we're looking to deploy a pod that will come down to the API server. And the API server, as we talked about in the last video, will determine if this end user has the right permissions and um, is who they say that they are. So that's the um, authentication and authorization component of um, you know, ensuring the request is valid. Then we might run through some admission controllers and validation. And at that point, the API server will have de determined that this pod is in fact valid. And at that point, it will be switched to a pending phase and the container state will be waiting. And at this point, we go over and reason will remain blank. At this point, we go up to the scheduler because now we need to determine which node we're going to place our pod onto. So if we get to this scheduling point and we determine that the node actually cannot be scheduled, for example, we may not have enough CPU resource. In this case, an event will be thrown, but it actually isn't uh, reflected in the reason for whatever reason. This is just how the uh, Kubernetes API works, but you, we will see that event and the event will be failed failed schedule just like that sorry scheduling okay but it won't actually show up and we'll just see in our status column we will just see um pending still well let's say that doesn't happen all right and we actually are able to schedule the pod now we have defined the node name that we want to send the pod to and at this point, let's say we, we choose our middle node that we're going to go to. So now we need to set up the containers that are defined within the pod. And in order to do this, we need to contact our container registry, right? And this is where we'll pull an image down to our node. Um, so let's say the user has made an error and the container that they are trying to pull doesn't actually exist. At this point, we will remain in our pending and waiting phase. However, we will see an, a reason show up, which is error image pull. Initially, this is what we will see. And then as we continue to retry to pull the image, there may be a network issue or something initially. So Kubernetes has an automatic retry. At that point, after um, that has happened for a certain amount of time and we have decided, okay, we're just not gonna be able to find this image. So at that point we get to an image pull back off and the container unfortunately is not gonna be set up. Okay, so that's a, an error uh, that can happen during the container setup phase. Let's say that doesn't happen. We're able to pull our, hold on a second, bring to front. We're able to pull our image and our pod and our containers are getting set up in the node. At this point, once our container is set up, then we'll transition to the running phase for the container and also for the pod. And this is our desired state. 
And I think that is a decent overview of the life cycle of the pod. Obviously, at a certain point, we can run into other failures. We may need to restart the pod. Um, and as I mentioned, the pod phase will remain as running even when we restart the pod. It's only after we um, exit and you know we, have, we know that we can't rerun the pod that we actually uh, transition from the phase of running to failed. Or if we actually exit with success, then we transi transition to succeeded. So I hope that was somewhat informative for you. If you have any questions about that, please do leave a comment. Um, please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next video.